What's up everybody, it's Monkey Farm, and welcome to my horse, ass, and mule shop. Asses being donkeys, of course, and this is an item shop, more like a vending machine, where you can select from several different items, and then uh, insert your payment into the chest, and your item will be delivered to you. Of course, we have a horse in here, an ass in here, or a donkey, of course. Um, and a mule. So what this will allow us to do is select which one we want. Let's see, there's number one for the horse. We've got number two for the donkey and number three for the mule. Uh, why don't we go with the horse first? So let's see, that's step one. Step two, insert your diamond block. That is our payment. Uh, we will enter that and our horse drop down and of course step three uh, we get a lead uh, dispensed into the chest and then we can drag our horse out whatever and uh, and that is it so why don't we start gathering all of our animals here there's number two and let, let's select number three Then of course the selector gets reset after your selection is made and your purchase is made. And it's just a, a mob evader, you know, water canal that pushes the animals over here. And uh, by the way, so I'm going to do a tutorial on all the redstone pieces of this. You don't really have to lay out the room like this. Uh, I just did it, you know, in a room style because in case you're building a, a shop on a server or something like that where you want to have multiple items for sale. Um, I just laid it out so you could kind of get an idea of how to integrate it into, uh, into your server. Okay, we are on the outside of the unit here, and at first all the redstone may look really daunting and, and confusing and difficult, um, but I'm going to break it down into all the different pieces, and then at that point it should be really easy, and then all you have to do is kind of connect all the different pieces together. All right, the first piece is the item selector, where we push the button on the wall and we select which item, which animal that we want to drop. Um, and basically what this is, is an RS Norlatch array. It's a tileable thing, so really all you're going to have to learn how to build, you know, you just copy this thing right here and build a bunch of them next to each other. And basically what it does is it allows the item out of the dropper to come up here into the hopper. And that powers the comparator and turns off this torch. And each animal or each item selection uh, comes up here to a redstone torch. So we're going to have a bunch of redstone torches up here next to each other. And whichever item you choose by pushing the button on the wall, uh, the corresponding redstone torch is going to light up. And then that, of course, uh, this looks messy, but... Um, that torch will end up coming over here and allowing the item, you know, the animal to drop. Now the reason we have all this other messy redstone stuff in the way, we can't just have this redstone torch power uh, the piston and shut it off, is because we don't want people to just push a button on the wall and have the animal drop. We only want the animal to drop if they put a diamond block in the chest. And that's where the item shop comes in, where uh, I've built several of these where it will only accept the correct item, which is a diamond block. Um, and we'll go into that a little bit more. But basically, we have a bunch of AND gates over here. So when one of these torches is on and the diamond is inserted into the chest, both of these torches over here, or here, or here, we're going to have one for each animal or item, uh, both of these torches will go off and then it will allow the animal to drop. So only when both of those things happen together will the animal drop. So you won't have people stealing your items uh, when they don't put a diamond block in or something like that. Uh, basically it will only work when they've selected an item and insert the diamond into the chest. All right, let's get moving. So we'll start with, I guess you'd call it the cash register, where you're putting the money in. Uh, we're going to have a chest. And don't worry, I'll build this in front of you real quick because it's, it's very easy to build. But I want to show you all the pieces. So you have a chest where they're putting the diamond block. And you have a hopper under that going to a double chest. And this allows 
uh, you to catch any junk. So let's say I didn't want to pay with a diamond block. I said, oh, I'm going to put a sign in there and get my horse. Well, no, all that junk is going to end up in this junk chest over here. Uh, the item they can pay with is the diamond block, and that will be let down here. So when that happens, the comparator lights up, bam, this torch right here will light up or actually turn off, and that is going to be your, uh, your payment, your output. So if somebody pays with a diamond block, you get an output, you get a flicker of that redstone torch, and that's how you're going to power things. All right, let's build this puppy. So you want to start with a chest, and this will be where people are inserting the payment. And behind the block that the chest is on, you want to put your double chest. And that's going to be for the, all the junk. So you want a hopper pointing into that double chest underneath the regular the payment chest. I'm going to put a couple blocks here so I can point my hoppers. Uh, but underneath that hopper, you want to uh, point two hoppers facing into the block. So make sure the little stem is pointing to the side, not pointing down. And then at the very bottom one, you're going to have another chest, and this can be single or double, whatever you want. This is where all your diamond payments are going to end up after people pay. Okay, once you have your hoppers in place, put a couple blocks here below or behind the very bottom hopper. Put your comparator here. That's going to be identifying a, an item in, uh, in the middle hopper. And you want to put a redstone there a block one step down and another redstone on that. You want a block underneath here with a repeater. Put it on the second tick. So uh, after you place it, just click it, right click it once. Uh, you need a block in front of that repeater and a redstone torch right there. And that's gonna prevent the items from going through. Uh, right here, you're gonna need Depending on what items you use, uh, any normal stackable item, you're going to need 18. Uh, I recommend doing, actually, uh, a, a subscriber of mine suggested this, using maps uh, that you clone in your, uh, in your crafting uh, bench because they're not uh, duplicable, so nobody can rip you off. And you need to put one of your payment items in here. So if people are paying with a block of diamonds, of course, welcome the rain. Uh, that's what you need to put in there. Okay, we're back, sorry about the rain. Let's try this thing out. So if I pay with the wrong item, it'll end up in the junk chest over here. If I pay with the correct item, the diamond block, uh, this light will flicker and uh, the diamond blocks will end up in this chest. Uh, the first one, of course, gets stuck in the hopper. Uh, but the second time you get a payment, it'll end up in the chest. Now, the output, of course, as I said, is down here, and you're going to run a redstone line off of that, and we're going to connect it. Um, so that's one piece of the puzzle. Uh, we need an item selected, and then we need payment. And when we get payment, watch the redstone line down there. It flickers. Uh, so that is the, the first piece of the puzzle that we need. The second piece of the puzzle is the item selector, which is the RS Norlatch array. And by the way, I need to give a little shout out to uh, the guy who designed this, Mesotech. Um, I saw a video of his, it's uh, pretty easy to build. And this is just one of those slices right here. All you do is pile them next to each other. And then I'll show you how to do the reset button, of course. Uh, but what's happening, like I said, is the item is getting uh, pushed uh, out of the dropper up here and powering this and then of course you're gonna have an output up here um, so let's show you none of these torches on the top are on let's see I'll push number one and it will turn on takes a while of course but uh, or I can change it to number two that will turn on and then number three by the way, you'll see the redstone or the glowstone lamps flicker, but don't worry, it's not actually flickering twice. Uh, that's just because the button is underneath this block, so it gets two different times, it gets powered two different times. And then, of course, uh, we have a reset, which will turn all of them off. 
Okay, feel free to go to Mesotech's uh, full tutorial on this, um, but I'm going to build one slice of it for you. And basically all you have to do is pile them all next to each other. Um, but let's just get started real quick here. Uh, you need a block with a button on it. Above that, you need a redstone lamp. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed, I accidentally put a glowstone here when I built that one. Uh, but I just realized that. So you want a block on top of that. Redstone torch block on top of that and another redstone torch and then behind the I was almost gonna say glowstone lamp the redstone lamp you want a block with a comparator pointed into this block right here you want you want a dropper pointed up and then you want a hopper pointed into that dropper down. So the stem will be pointed into there. You can throw one item in here. It doesn't matter what kind of item it is, just one item. Okay, so down here you need a redstone repeater pointed that direction. No ticks. And then another block under the dropper. And then a block behind the dropper. And then one back and up. And behind where the redstone repeater is pointed, you want a redstone torch, a redstone torch, and then pointed over on this side towards the hopper, uh, another redstone torch. And then on that block, you put a redstone. And this thing is done, uh, or at least for one slice. Okay, so here's where the tricky part happens. We have an item selector with a bunch of items, hopefully three. Uh, and then we have our cash register where we are making the bank deposit uh, for purchase. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to connect these right here. Okay, so let's build. I'm going to redo this. I am going to build the reset for you because um, we're going to connect. We're going to connect our item shop over there to, on the side with our item selector. So we'll click this. Um, let's see if we have everything built here. Let's reset. Okay, so that's reset. And then we have our output over here, which I'm going to bring over. I hope I'm going to bring it over here. And it looks like it's getting dark again. So um, what I'm doing here is just vertical wiring up so that I can get the output way up here. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm going to put a download for the entire shop over there in the uh, link in the description to the download of this so you can check it out in person. And, uh, you know, I figured that might be easier for you to, to see all the redstone, how to connect it all together because, you know, it's a little messy. Uh, but what we're going to do here is just connect our item shop here to our item selector. So let's bring, um, let's just bring a line back here. And let's bring a line way back here. Um, I want to step it down a bit so they're on the same level. And okay. So let's just bring some redstone from both of those way down here. Make sure none of your lines cross or you don't want your redstone getting messed up. Okay, just to make things easy, I'm actually going to bring these things together here real quick. Okay, that'll help us out a little bit. Uh, what we need to happen here is we need some kind of redstone signal to be sent when both of these items have uh, power. In other words, when somebody's entered a diamond block and when somebody has selected an item, we need an AND gate so that the signal will only come out when both of them are together. This is like the very first thing you probably learned in redstone, the AND gate. So what you'll see is that this torch is off, right? And we're going to put a piston here just so we can hear it from far away. Um, let's find our piston. Hopefully we'll be able to hear it. Uh, that should power right. I don't know. Hopefully we'll be able to see it. Okay, so neither of these ones have power. Um, we need to select our item first. Otherwise, you're going to throw away a diamond block. So look, we have that is now off. So that torch is still off. Now, once this flickers, there we go. We entered a diamond block. Let's try that again and not drop all of our items. Okay, so every time we enter a diamond block, that, uh, that AND gate is going to activate the piston. And basically what that is, 
is linking over to you know a simple piston floor this I'm not going to show you how to build because you should know how to do that um, it's basically you know horses or they need a, a, a two wide space three blocks like this uh, obviously they can't fit in through one hole if you want to make it look nicer of course you can put uh, whoops you can put uh, you know pistons on the other side so they have a solid floor I just chose not to do that uh, for the tutorial, then uh, you know you have a water canal and your typical water elevator, and you just need to checkerboard. Whoops, where's my sign? Just make sure your water is all flowing in. Okay. Um, I think you guys probably know how to do mob evaders. If you've watched my videos at all, um, you should know how. And basically, the horse will come in here, swim up. So that's how I did it in the shop. You know, you may build it differently where you don't need them. You don't need the horse to elevate back up or anything like that. Um, but that is basically every piece of the puzzle that I built over there in that little room. All right. Well, I hope this thing doesn't look as uh, as difficult as it might have in the beginning of the video. All the little pieces individually are fairly easy to make. Um, it's just you know connecting them together and making that work was uh, was probably the most difficult part of it. So, um, oh, did I not have my dispenser? I didn't even have my dispenser connected. It's a good thing I didn't try to get a lead out. You guys would have seen. Um, does that need to be, let's try this again, make sure we get a lead, yep, there's a lead there, but let's, uh, try horse number three, we'll enter that, the floor will drop out, and we got another lead, there we go, okay, um, I assume you guys will know how to power up a dispenser from the output there, so I'm not going to bother with that. But like I said, once again, this will be, uh, I'll put a download in the description. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure, you know, this can be made a lot more compact. I just made it a big room, big horse vending machine, a big ass shop. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please make sure you are subscribed. Thumb up the video if you did like it. And we will see you guys next time.